I am Lamont at large today. I am at the Moore Cemetery here in Nevada, Missouri. I'm here to show the grave of George Mercer, a man who was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to die by lethal injection. And that sentence was carried out on January 6th, 1989. So as I look for the grave of George Mercer, I've been here before, so I pretty much know it's in that general vicinity over there. I want to talk to you guys really quickly about the crime uh, that he committed and that he was executed for. So on August 31st, 1978, George Mercer was drinking beer with a few of his friends at the Blue 7 Lounge in Grandview, Missouri. And he had remarked to one of his friends that the barmaid, uh, a young woman by the name of Karen Keaton, who was 22 years old at the time of the crime, was very attractive, and he, quote-unquote, wanted to have sex with her. So a man that was with, uh, uh, with George at the time at the bar, his name was Stephen Gardner, he was an acquaintance of Karen, not a friend, but an acquaintance. He goes to the bar, starts talking to her, Ask her if she wanted to go out and have breakfast. She says yes, so they leave the bar together. Uh, so later on that night, George Mercer goes back to his home where he's hanging out with his friends, John Campbell and David G. John Campbell then comes back to the Mercer house with Karen in tow. They're sitting around having a couple beers, and all of a sudden, George pulls out a shotgun and points it at the head of Karen Keaton and says, get your ass upstairs, quote unquote. She thinks it's a joke. She's looking at Steven for help and he just laughs at her. So George forces her upstairs and that's where the brutal crime starts happening. All four men for the next three hours took their turns raping Karen Keaton, brutally raping, all while leveling a shotgun at her head and threatening to kill her. So for hours on end, uh, these four scumbags, who are all a uh, part of a motorcycle club based out of Missouri called the Missing Links, George Mercer was the president of this, this club. So they take their turns having fun with her, or what they call fun, and then everybody passes out. So John is sleeping on the couch downstairs, and he heard, hears George calling his name. Hey, John, hey, John, get up here, get up here. So he comes upstairs, and he sees George straddling Karen's body, strangling her with his hands, and he says, check her pulse. John proceeds to check her pulse. She's dead. And then he commands John to clean up the room, clean up the excrement that was all over the bed, all over the floor, take all the bedding and throw it in the washer. He proceeds to do that, and then he enlists him in helping of dispose of Karen's body. They drive about 50 miles into the middle of nowhere, and George jumps out of the truck hauls her body out into the side of the road and then go, goes ahead and just leaves it. So about three or four weeks later, the heat is going on. There's a missing girl. No one knows what happened to her. She's all over the news in uh, the Kansas City area uh, and all over Missouri. And uh, Campbell feeling the heat, feeling the pressure of the inevitable, he contacts the detectives and says, okay, uh, I need, we need to talk. I know what happened to her. Um, he tells the detectives the brutal crime that took place. George Mercer, David G., Stephen Gardner, and John Campbell are all arrested and charged with first-degree murder and rape. Uh, they all cop pleas, and they all point the finger of blame at George Mercer. Being that he was already out on bail on a, another rape charge, the prosecuting's office says we need to go with the death penalty on this one because this crime was horrifically brutal. 
he was tried, convicted of the first degree murder and uh, was promptly sentenced to die by lethal injection. And at the time he was sentenced to lethal injection, uh, the state of Missouri had uh, taken away the gas chamber. And he was the first, first man executed in Missouri since they brought back uh, the death penalty. And here he is, the rapist murderer himself, George Tiny Mercer. August 31st, 1944 to January 6th, 1989, husband of Christy Mercer. If I were Christy, uh, I would petition the court for a name change and come here and chisel my name off of this man's stone. More like a monster, I should say. An odd, uh, an odd uh, little tidbit about this whole story. The warden at the time of the prison in Missouri, George is waiting for execution. And I'm assuming he's thinking he's going to get a stay of execution. And the warden comes into a cell hours before he's set to be executed. And the warden tells him, George, uh, your, your clemency has been denied. The execution is going to go as planned. And the warden said to a news reporter it was almost like a like george had a look of shock on his face um his claims of him being a changed man and he found god and uh, the tiny that once was is no more so he's thinking because he's all of a sudden a a a, a newfound quote-unquote christian that he that the punishment is not going to come down um like a hammer on an anvil for the for what he's done to that poor girl and uh 12 03 a.m on january 6 1989 that needle went right in that vein and i tell you what the execution went very smoothly he fell asleep within three minutes and he was dead at 12 09 a.m and rightfully so rightfully so Some people just don't need to be on our good earth breathing, breathing our good air. Anyways, uh, I got to go. Uh, this, this person is no longer here and no longer able to hurt anybody. So anyways, I will catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.